comes into the very grand finals. All right, we're loading into the draft right now, and Aries, I want to I want to touch on the topic of new meta. Your team so far, is RSG banning. has still insisted on running LY4 as a jungle marksman. That is going to restrict some kind of draft because normally that slot is filled for an assassin, uh, for a fighter. It does restrict your draft if you only want to run your marksman in the jungle. So how is this going to affect this, uh, you know, this drafting game here? Well, I definitely do have to say that Potato has shown uh, a bit of an adaptation into the jungle role. He's been playing the Xbox and the... Uh, you think RSG other, will do that? Yeah, and the Bane as well. But for RSG, they have been sticking to the guns, the Yi Sun Shin, uh, making sure banning. that they run along with that conventional uh, jungle of theirs. We've seen them try to experiment with other heroes, not really too positive with that. But good point that you made. I think RSG over here, they're picking more on their comfort picks. Hey, they don't want to experiment too banning. much. It, it has been that success formula they've run into as far. But when you're going up against Eagles, right? The grand champions, the champions of season one, your old rivalry team, you know them inside out. You your know them better than banning. anyone else. And this is where you can't just stick to your old guys. You need to come with something a little bit more innovative, and that's a new meta coming into the play. The new meta being a jungler that's not a key target to be focused on because now you have a secondary carry in the goal lane and that's where Jason comes in. So for LY4 to be able to adapt to that new meta and play a different type of jungle style, a different play style, it, need, it takes a lot of adaptation because you have to remember LY4 has been playing Marksman his entirety in his MLBB career and now for him to just suddenly say, okay, I have to play as a fighter, I have to play as a tank, it's I'm not going to be easy no matter how good or yeah, yeah. I mean, if he wants to change, it might be time for him to maybe rotate into side lanes uh, as a Marksman. But let's see here, Your two artillery majors down, up. we have Farsa and Eve going to be taking a back seat this game and now we'll open with a Paquito. No Diablo, but a Paquito for baby things. Yeah, Paquito is always good to have. Uh, he is a lame bully. They reduced his stacks on this passive from 4 to 3. Uh, some would say it's a slight buff. I, I would definitely say it's a bit of an adjustment there. Uh, but Paquito is just nice because he can cut the waves. He's very hard to catch. He has mobility and most importantly, he's got burst. So if he can find uh, one or two members of EVOS's backline, uh, ideally Potato or even Adamir or even Sailor on that mage then you know that could be a entry point for RSG to start fights. What's up with Kufra, Mr. Abstract? Do you think it's good? Honestly at this point in time they are just looking for a Kufra that will be able to counter against yep. the Paquito especially in the early stages of the game. They have that insurance and then in the over in the later stages of the game Evos will want to use Kufra more as a conventional tank. Because if you are looking for a Roma that doesn't really have a lot of tanky, uh, tanky abilities but is more of initiating style, then Evos would lean towards the early stages a little bit more. Yeah, Krufa is also one of RSG's comfort pick on Lozi, so it, it also denies the Krufa pick away from RSG. Banning. So Evos here going for a little bit more sustain, they spot out the Yutong, oh. they want to get the Uranus to cut the waves. And by cutting the waves, that will force the Yutong to stick in the lane and not be able to join the team fight. So uh, Evos here, very smart drafting. We don't don't necessarily have to have a team fight with Uto. If yep. we can just cut the waves, apply the pressure onto the side, RSG will be forced yeah. to get the Uto away from the The, the, the trick attention. with Uto is to not engage him head on. Uh, and you know, the Nathan just telegraphs that you want to death ball and just fight as a squad. So Uranus, very good at running circles around the enemy team, like you said, cut, cut lanes. I think you need one more. Uh, Benedetta is open, right? Benedetta is open. That is a consideration as well because Esme is the other one that could Your also split push very banning. well with her mobility and speed. And yeah, I, I do think Benedetta would be in the cards here. You, what do you guys think? There is a lot of things that could be played out. RSG, it, they can definitely still play Benedetta, especially since there is Kufra on the opponent side. It's going to be tough. But if they're looking for a bigger point of view, they don't want to be tunnel vision by the fact that there is a Kufra on the opponent's side, they can still kind of pick that out. But the far-fetched uh, point of view from my side is actually Baxter can be very big, very good for both RSG and EVOS as well. They can pick up either one of these, considering the fact that EVOS, they can pick up Baxter against the side of Jason and having the Baxter on the jungle. But we don't really see Potato or literally anyone from EVOS doing that, and so does RSG. While the Baxter can counter against Adamir, which is the main problem about uh, EVOS, they scale over to the late stages of the game which would make things a little bit tough for RSG to handle over at the late. They have good late game decision making mm -hmm. which is why they favour the late game. Now I I'm thinking all EVOS would pick up Granger here. Uh, I do believe RSG I are going to look towards banning Granger if not. 
Uh, I don't think they will give. I don't think they will ban Ling. I don't think they're too concerned with Ling. Uh, but yeah, Granger seems like it will be on the chopping block. Could be wrong. What, what do you think? Yeah, what? I think it is a good shout. Granger is a good shout, but another hero banning. that uh, RG has to be careful of is actually going to be the Bane. Ooh, um, we, we have seen success with the Bane in the jungler or the goal position played by both Potato and Jason respectively. Very different kind of roles, but ideally. Uh, what Bane brings to the table is that he has that huge CC in him in his ultimate, right? The shock waves, it pushes away a lot of these melee heroes that RSU would want to come into. And you've got Nathan, you've got uh, you've got uh, the Paquito over there, you've got Yuzong as well. That once the Black Dragon Farm drops, all the Bane has to do is use the ultimate, push them away, and then allow the Kagura to just kind of engage from the back. They also have a very reliable frontliner in the Kufra, so that could be a big, big problem for RSG if EVOS chooses to go for the Bane. Banner Data is ban banned out, so the split push strategy is not going to be as effective now. EVOS now thinking, if we still want to go for a split push, they could go for something funky. Uh, Fanny comes to mind. Fanny has been picked in a lot of the other regions. Uh, you know, if his Grand Finals is Game 1, this is when a lot of cheese picks do come out. Uh, and there could be some surprises here. So Fanny, come, uh, Fanny could be cool uh, because she just flies around X -Ball. the map. Xbox is still Xbox available. Is good. Uh, Xbox later. does a little less damage, I would say. Like consistent, like poke damage. He's more of like the annoying play, fan the flames in front of you kind of game. And uh, a little bit more team fight, but Fanny is really just flying around. But it looks like they're going to default to a Ruby just for uh, fighter crowd control. You know, you have Yutong, you have Paquito in the mix. Ruby will be able to run interference and make their life difficult. Evos are looking very durable here. And it makes me think that, you know, they, they, they might just want to fight this death ball head-on. They're not going to be playing the split push game. Uh, I love this Ruby pick, right? It keeps RSG guessing. Is it going to be a Hyper Ruby? Is it going to be a Golem Ruby? It can go either way. So it actually keeps RSG guessing. Now, I think for RSG, yeah. yes, the Ruby could be a bit of a threatening pick. It is a flex pick after all. But at the end of the day, they need to focus on their current Draft. Their draft is the death portrait, like like Sander mentioned. There is already the Nathan that's there. They have a very good uh, backline disruptor in the Uzo. But you look at the side of Evos, they don't really have a backline yeah, per se. Yeah, they don't picking. have a backline per se. Oh, really the Buxia. Okay. And it is going to be the Buxia, you know, a good counter into the Uranus and the Ruby. It stops a lot of that regeneration ability from Evos, you know, kind of breaks down uh, the passive playstyle that Evos loves. And uh, they add on the Lilio as well, which Kinda goes with that death watch that the lights and the Uh Lilia is a comfort for RSG at this point. Now, for the last pick on Evos, I, I think this box is clever because I think Evos were looking to close it out with some physical high damage. So someone like a Granger, but Boxia just makes Granger's life very difficult. So now do you think about maybe building magic damage? But then your pushing is weak. So I, yeah. it feels like Bane is the only right answer here uh, for Evos. Bane they would, or they at, at this point in time, a marksman would probably going to be the case for EVOS considering the fact that they can actually bring oh, everyone. Carry. Okay. Yeah, they, can, they can literally bring uh, the... Uh, we, they, they definitely need marksman yeah. over, to the goal, uh, over to the goal lane. Yeah. If they were to pick anyone that's more Ooh, durable, Adamir, they don't really have oh, anyone else to go wait. over to that side. So Edemir would definitely yeah. be picking okay. the carry. Yep. And in this case, potato, it does seem like Potato hyper. going on a Hyper Uranus. We have seen that happen before, uh, especially in the NPR SG. It didn't quite work out very well because it's kind of make things a little bit tough. Yeah, uh, Edemir going for the carry. I've said many times, I think carry is going to be a great counter to tank like you told, you know, the dragon's always scary, but if you just hold your ground and hit him with the max hit point passive, you can take him out while mid flight, you know. So I think it's going to be a good threat. I like how we're just putting that in for the grand finals now. Versus, versus, versus. Let's go for that trophy. We're loading into the land of dawn. It's a best of seven. Game number one. We got some new picks. We got carry. Hasn't done well in the past, but it could this time well in the hands of Adamir. Let's see what happens. Evos, RSG, Abstract, Eris, over to you. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Grand Finals Best of Five match number one. So, Best of Seven! Well, it's an upgrade, upgrade. One. no longer playing We got five. an upgrade here! So, Tank protects the goal lane, in this case, uh, for EVOS will be to protect the carry. And the Uranus is kind of just there to soak the pressure from RSG match. And now, we are going to be moving on into the game by itself as we look at Potato, the jungler, finding himself having a little bit of a problem by Baby Kicks as he rushes him right into his face, literally so close to kissing him, and to the point that he actually did bring Potato down for the first time for this match, giving RNG the first blood. Yeah, very aggressive positioning, and remember the stats, 19 first blood, now make that 20. 
and one of them being Evo's top lane. Wow, a lot, a lot of pressure for RSG. With Adam here trying to get himself right back, the Shah Residue did manage to stack up right on top of Carry, so unfortunately he would not be able to play in this fight that much. He's currently kind of out of commission, but Longsi, Jason, and Spy 5, they managed to put themselves up in the front lines a little bit and force a kind of false positive fight between themselves and Evos. Yeah, Evos here trying to make the most out of the place after giving away the first blood. You could see R immediately turning their attention down onto the bot lane. I think Gear most likely should be able to survive this one. Uh, but look at that, look at the aggression that RSG is putting out immediately after getting the first blood, knowing that there is no Uranus, they cut the top wave, now they apply pressure to the bomb. This is what they want, they want LY4 to quickly clear up the jungle as fast as he can, take objectives and then be able to snowball on that Nathan. We're looking at RSG being the sledgehammer and they would really want to break off the wall that EVOS is currently building up for themselves considering the fact that Potato is a jungler, he's a tanky frontline. And not to forget, we also have JPL who initiates and is also pretty tanky by himself as a conventional tank. So RSG's early game aggression will be able to help them spiral out of control a little bit more so than EVOS is able to and hopefully with that momentum and that snowball, it will bring that brick wall down. Yeah, it's going to be very vital here uh, for JPL on this crew front to be able to stop RSG members from diving onto the back line. You can see Lozi here, he's already setting up the rolling unit, he's using his box out just so well and he's cutting right in between of them. Lozi, he tries to get himself right back with not a lot of help to work with, but one that doesn't have help is going to be Adamir, taken down by the hands of RSG. Sailor moves in, brings Lozi down. Unfortunately, the box would not be able to be that much of a nuisance with the Tortoise with Passons as RSG and managed to clean a 141 against each other, tallying the score out, but it's a little bit more advantageous over to RSG. Yeah, Lozi just prioritizing, creating havoc onto the back line of Evos. We talked about that Lozi needs to open the map for RSG. He's He's been one of those tanks that's been playing very aggressively in Season 2 and that's that's where he, he comes in as such a disturbing player to play against. He's just there. The game going underway. Uh, just to refresh your memory, RSG didn't manage to get the first blood. They got a Q onto Adamus carry as well, which is always nice to have. And for the side of Evos, they're currently lacking in terms of uh, the way they would hope that the early game went for. You know, Uranus being taken off the board, but they're still keeping up in terms of farm. Not too much between them, only 1k. It is 2 is 2 1 at this point in time. RSG is looking good at a total of about close to 1.3 thousand gold lead and the way that RSG is moving about right now is to ensure that they have got good pressure in the bottom lane to ensure that LY4 is always kept up to speed in his farm. You wouldn't want him to stay idle down in the bottom lane and just constantly waiting for lanes to push in and that is why you are always looking at someone that sticks around with LY4 to ensure that he's got somewhere to go, he's safe and he's also earning at the same time. Uh, team fight could break out here really soon. Lozzy starts off by sticking down there. I don't think we might see any cues here because both teams would love to play conservatively. Oh, but look at that, Ruby! Ooh, with Lozzy currently with half HP. They're just going to be focusing down on gear while Jason flies right in with the Black Dragon form. We also are going to be looking at a really nice Taurus Rage. Slamming everyone else into the wall. Left with four members coming from the side of Evos and Skier has now already lost his life. JPL with a low amount of HP. Potato! Right Potato! Flickers! Potato has his, his deed! Consecration! Potato! Gets himself away, no problems whatsoever. But Evos though, they did manage to bring two percent down for them. Damage output over time. And that is where they are able to drag on fights a little bit longer to benefit Adamir's exponential increase in terms of damage. Yeah, that and the fact that Uranus has a ton of damage, just not that bursty. Remember, he's got the Ionic Edge, so if right. he can stick on top CCs per se, because they have the Buxia's uh, Roll Unity, they have the Paquito, and they also have LY Force Reposition, but that's about it. That, that, that's about it. We are now finally moving on with the game, ladies and gentlemen. In case you are wondering, this is the action between the games right here. As we are going to be looking at Baby Cake. He's finding himself right in front of the face of JPL. He slams him right into the wall with the Tyrant's Rage. But looking at the same time, we do have Jason flying right in. Might be bloating himself right below on Celia as well as Adamir. HP, down low. Adamir, he's okay. Adamir, he's going back home. Well, Jason, he's just going to be collateral damage alongside with the rest of the members coming from RSG to bring down the rest of Evos, and now they're going to be chipping off the first inhibitor turret. Well, what a momentum breaker that was! And oh, so Sailor goes in, and he goes with the female with the Bella Free, and he picks up Lozzy here. But RSG 
they get what they came for and it's going to be the first tier 3 over the top lane of Evo's Bay. It is just one first inhibitor turret. They still need two more in order to bring the Baron Wasteland onto the side of Evo's. They still have the second tier turret at the bottom lane though, so they still got to have to play things around. Do note, this is 9 minutes into the game. 9 minutes! And they have already got one inhibitor turret down. So you can imagine just how crazy, how fast RNG is operating right now. They want to ensure that EVOS will have no other avenue to work with when it comes to the late stages of the game. Yeah, that was definitely a very uh, in intense fight for time RNG. They managed to get both Potato as well as Adamir, and we talked about how important Adamir has been for EVOS. And you look at the items across the board right now, RNG coming fully online. The Nathan looking really good being played by LY4 and you can see Jason doing an absolutely Red fantastic job at jumping destroyed. right on top of Adamir as well to zone the carry away from the fight and if the carry cannot get into the action and break down the heroes like Baxia and Ito himself then Evos could be in a very 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 tough spot Lonzi is just gonna be riding around the map opening up the maps as much as possible while still trying to be as safe as possible the entirety of EVOS hides themselves within the brush to ensure that they will be able to be safe and sound, especially since they don't have JPL in the front lines. They need to stop Lonzi, and that's the main thing, in order that Lonzi don't just jump onto the back lines, because that is definitely going to be one of RSG's biggest plays. EVOS here, not exactly in the spot that they want to be in. We spoke about how important it is for them to get into the late game, but 10 minutes in, RSG not taking a break. JPL, he is going to be taking the brunt of the damage coming from the side of RSG, but it is just a small little tackle coming from LLC to redeem the positioning that they really wanted back at the north east and south of the map, which is in EVOS's jungle itself. They want to hold on to all of these objectives. They want to hold on and suffocate EVOS as much as possible, which you can pretty much see that Jason is doing a really good job and suffocating everyone else and even trying to put a decent amount of damage onto Potato. Yeah, you saw Potato already burning the Consecration away, so if they bring the Uranus down here, EVOS is going to be in a deficit. Well, Jason, he, unfortunately, he will not be able to go into the Black Fanger 4 because of Gear just going to go in for Arm Offender, but unfortunately, Gear goes down. Potato, he does not have Consecration, so he's just going to be working his way around it. Well, we do have the one two punches as well as an uppercut landing around top potato with three person down from the side of Evos. The rest of RSG backs off, making sure that they'll be able to hold on to the middle lane. Yeah, RSG now, the Lord is obviously going to be the next objective for them, but Evos getting blown up in the fight. You know, you, you pointed out that Jason couldn't use his Black Dragon form, but that CC just wasn't enough, and because of that, Evos was just constantly that constantly running away from that fight, backwards fighting. Yes, that is the style that they have to play with for RSG because they're sticking so close as one unit, it's hard for Evos to find an entry point because they're just pummeling a lot of damage right onto the Uranus, onto the Ruby, and they're not giving enough time for Evos to actually get any sort of a regen up. It's 12 minutes into the game. RSG realizes that objective is definitely going to be the way to go. Taking out the Lord the is going to be pivotal. It's going to be one thing that helps them push down the inhibitor in the middle lane and the bottom lane. Taking it down and flushing the, uh, flushing the Lord to march up the top lane would be great. Evons, they will have to split up their forces to defend at their biggest will. Yeah, and if you take a note of the battle spells, Adamir and Gear still do not have their flicker off cooldown. So they don't really want to take a fight right now because there's no escape mechanism for them. There is no catch available for the Ruby to go in and use the Arm of Thunder onto the backline of RSG. This being LY4 as well as 505. So they need to be very, very cautious about how they want to approach this oh. gear. Nearly catching out baby kicks with the ultimate there. But I think even if they did manage to catch him, he would be able to just use the heavy left jab and run away. But for now, things are definitely going to be spiraling out of control. As we have Jason, he's just going all right on to JPL. JPL gets away. How about here? Gets himself away. Rashu? No, he will not be able to shoot himself away from all of that. Well, we do have the core currently dropping less than 50%, and even getting the core taken down. RSG makes a quick work out of Evos, the one and only RSG. 
what a start to the series that is the grand final. So much drama going between these two teams. And well, a little bit of an anticlimactic pause at the start. But here <laughs> we are. The moment we jumped into the game, it was immediately action punch. Back to back, non stop battles and duels and team fights between these two titans. Well, this is the reason why it's the L particle. It's not called the match to look out for for no absolute reason. Look at the item builds and the stats. My goodness, RSG taking the lead in every single objective. RSG just really have got a really good early stage in the game, apparently. Paquito made a very quick work out of his enemies with a total of 5 kills, 5 assists. And other than that, Yu Zhong onto the side of Jason. He's got great frontline capabilities while he's tagged along with Longzi. As Longzi, yes, he died 5 times, but he did his work and he, done, uh, and he does his job well to allow Lilia to also come in with a massive amount of 3 kills, 9 assists. While LY4 whittles everyone down away as the main bruiser in the early stages and perhaps even the one that really does the bulk of the damage over the late. Yeah, the stats definitely do tell a very consistent story of RSG sacrificing Lozi as the Buxia player, not only to enable Lilia, but every single one of the members in their team to pop off. Look at that, only LY4 other than Buxia died once. Everyone else didn't die a single time, so it's, it's consistent in the way they play. That's the threat they're going to use because we have only one tank. He's going to be the one, jump in, use the toys poisons to just burn down that front line. We spoke about this, you know, apply the degen effect uh, onto the members of EVOS and more importantly, isolate carry away. And that's where Jason has to play a very big part on their Uto. He needs to use the Black Dragon form on this Uritong to zone the carry away from the fight. And to a certain degree, I felt like Evos did not manage to give the carry a good game. Edemir was not even allowed to partake in any uh, smooth farming process. And because of that, RSG was constantly in the lead. Evos, unfortunately, now that you take a look at how RSG has played, the aggressiveness makes, our, uh, makes Evos having a really bad time when it comes to babysitting for the carry himself. They don't have a lot of zone denials in this case. The, the, the thing that they have is initiation coming from, uh, from Kufra, but who would need that kind of initiation in the early stages of the game if Kagura is the only one that can dish out damage. Sure, carry can whittle down a little bit of off of tanks. Sure, Uranus, he can beef up a bit and just peel. And sure, we do have some CCs onto the Ruby. Yeah, remember, all this got kick-started when RG got the first blood onto the Uranus. Right. The moment P P Potato went down, increase, actually. Yeah, they, there was their license to roam up to the top because they knew it's a 3v2 we have numbers in our advantage. Let's gank the carry. There's nothing they can do. And because of the fact that EVOS is going for that late game strat, they need that greedy build uh, onto the carry as well as the Uranus and the Ruby. They were at a very huge advantage because a lot of their heroes could come online way earlier. Bakido has natural build, uh, damage built into his kit. You know, you've got Baxia that is one of the hardest hitting tanks in the earlier stages of the game as compared to any other tanks in the hero pool. And I believe that now that we're looking at the end of game number one, or rather match number one, it is very telegraphic for us to know who is going to be the MVP. As looking at power spikes, I would believe that Baby Cakes that is playing under the Paquito very likely is going to oh, be the really? MVP after all. I, I felt like it could be the Lilia, honestly. It could be a very tough shot, but you are right. It is going to be Baby Cakes that's playing the Paquito. And he's been doing a fantastic job, not only the regular season, mm -hmm. but if you look at game one, I felt like it was a bit of an unjust to the Ruby on, that's played by Gear mm -hmm. because Paquito just, he is a lame bully. Right, he is a lame bully. But Paquito was played in the top lane against the carry. It was the Uzong that was at the bottom they lane. They flipped it up. Yes. And generally, you want the Uzong to be getting farm onto the goal lane. Mm -hmm. But because they also have a Paquito, they said, you know what? It's interchangeable. Let's get the Paquito online way quicker. We have the Uzong, but the Uzong doesn't need farm. His main role is to zone Edwin away right. from the fight. So let's get Paquito a little bit more farm. Once he gets that war axe, he can play a bit more aggressively. We can look to bully. And because uh, Paquito comes online way quicker than Yutong, we have the substantial damage needed to actually 